Detroit Den 313. We are back. Stephen Will talking that Detroit Lions football. But before we get started, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new content. Today, we are getting off of the Jaff prospects for a moment. But I'll let Steve tell you what we're going to be talking about. Steve, tell the people. Uh, we're going to get into a little free agency, some rumors, what's true, what's not true. We don't know. We don't know what's true. But we do know that the Kansas City Chiefs have two positions of need for the Detroit Lions, and they can't keep both of them. So what's going to happen here, Will? Well, I love I love what you guys are putting in the comments. Uh, I, I love that you guys are talking about, hey, a lot of these top guys that you guys talked about are probably going to get franchise tag. We're not here to tell you you're wrong. You're right. There's a strong potential that a lot of these guys that are absolutely phenomenal impact players in the league are going to get the franchise tag if they don't figure out a way to negotiate a contract. But the Kansas City Chiefs are in a unique situation to where they got two absolute dogs and they can't franchise tag both of them. So I think that uh, there's a potential that one of them may be heading out of town. No guarantee. And you can't afford both of them. Yeah, there's no guarantees. But that leaves opportunities for guys like Brad Holmes. Steve, when we're talking about a world where we're talking about Legereus Sneed and we're talking about Chris Jones, do you think that there's a potential that Brad Holmes may uh, give those guys a shout, maybe talk to their agents and see see what, what those numbers look like? The numbers scare me. I think, uh, I don't know. The numbers do scare me because we got to pay our own guys first. We haven't signed Amon St. Brown or Jared Goff yet. Um, so the numbers scare me. I don't see this as being a path for Brad Holmes, but it, it could be. You just never know. So could he call the Kansas I mean, he doesn't have to call the Kansas City Chiefs. One of these guys in Sneed or Gers Jones is going to be available. I don't think they can pay them both. They're both going to want hefty amounts of dollar bills. We already saw that last year with Chris Jones, who sat out week one with a contract dispute when we played them. Um, and then he ended up getting his money. Um, one year deal. And now Legereus Sneed is also saying, Hey, I'd like a couple of those dollars as well. Well, you can't franchise tag both of them. I don't think you can pay both of them. One of them is going to leave plain and simple. So who's that going to be? In my opinion, I'm not the Kansas city chiefs. I don't give a shit about the Kansas city chiefs, but I think they're going to let Chris Jones walk. I will say that I think that you're wrong, Steve. You, you, it doesn't matter what I would have said there. You would have said the opposite. So it, here we go. Let's let's have at it. Uh, that's actually not true. Although <laughs> I do absolutely love love any chance I can get an opportunity to dig at you. So uh, I think that you're wrong because of this reason. Chris Jones has already said, "I want to be a Kansas City Chief. I want to stay in Kansas City, and I want us to figure it out." You know, is there? A business at the end of this thing? Absolutely, but I would like to be a Kansas City Chief. Lujarius Sneed, he has not said that. And I just wanted to make sure that I didn't quote the young man wrong. So I, I just went ahead and pulled it back up. He said, and I quote, coming off a career year, pay me, pay me, pay me, and pay me. So that's letting the world know, hey, listen, you're either going to pay me and take care of me or... I'm ready to put my walking shoes on. I already got a Super Bowl championship ring. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I, it's time for me to get paid. It's time for me to get dollars. Listen, I love a guy that plays with swag. I love a guy um, that is elite at his position. He's 27 years old. He has a lot of juice left in that tank. He plays a position that is an absolute nightmare for us. If, we, if the money's there, pay the man. I see we're making moves to get that cap space available i don't think that we're making those moves for no reason now guys i'm not here to tell you that i'm in brad holmes's head and he's creating cap space to go play pay legerious need it's not what i'm saying but the idea excites me the idea of cam sutton being a number two corner us being able to get a corner later on in the draft if we so choose or just signing these guys to one-year deals as we talked about before signing emmanuel mosley letting them get healthy maybe going out and grabbing one of these lesser corners and signing them to a one-year deal uh, to have some depth on his team. Jordan Lewis is a guy that I like that's out there, bringing him back to Michigan. You got that, that, that's a U of M kid, bringing him back here, um, letting him play, you know, in, in our secondary. Those, those are all options if we go out and we get a guy like this. It excites me, man. 
I think that it could be a tremendous help. Money's got to be right. You said Chris Jones wants to be a Kansas City Chief for life. I didn't say that he said he wants to be a Kansas City Chief for life, but he said that he wants to come back to the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll have to rewind the tape. But um, it's funny you say that because I want to take you to it's probably a nice summer day back in the year of, I don't know, probably 1992, 1993. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was little. Mm -hmm. I get to high school and my math class says that I'm not going to be an astronaut. Sometimes things in life just don't happen the way you want to. Sometimes you got to hear some bad news from some people you really look up to. This is true. I'm telling you right now, Chris Jones might say he wants to be a Kansas City Chief. That doesn't mean the Kansas City Chiefs want him to be on their team. They kind of already showed that. They've already showed their hands. Thirty, He'll be 30 years old in a couple months. Not old. He's going to demand $30 million. Do you think the Chiefs are paying that? Not a chance. I, I think that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to figure out a contract for a guy who wants to be a Kansas City Chief. Well, they couldn't figure it out at the beginning of last year. I don't see much changing. When he single-handedly in that fourth quarter probably was the reason that him and Patrick Mahomes were probably the reasons they're the Super Bowl champions right now because what he did to Brock Purdy might not have hit him, might not have tackled him, but a 6'6", 310-pound frame was in Brock Purdy's face more often than not, causing bad throws, disrupting, putting pressures, forcing some stupid decisions by Brock is the defensive reason. Him and Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator, were the reasons that, that Kansas City Chiefs defense buckled down. Yeah, I get it, man. I think if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs, though, I'm looking at just a year ago when we were talking about how their secondary was young and they had dollar menu guys, you know. So they obviously have shown the ability to be able to develop a secondary. Maybe that's how they're looking at it. No different than a Tyreek Hill. We can win without you. I think that it's easier to go find a corner than it is to go find a Chris Jones, you know, as we see as the Detroit Lions are struggling right now. So that being said, to me, if I got to sign one of the two guys, and if you're asking me which of the two guys that I would want to come to Detroit, I would say Chris Jones. But if Chris Jones isn't going to be available, I would love to have Legereus. I would love to share up the secondary. I would love to just be able to go into this draft knowing that we're going to address these pass rush issues. And maybe we're going to address this quarterback issue that we have on the opposite team's quarterback just running around and we're going to draft Edgy Cooper. But this isn't an Edgy Cooper show. <laughs> this isn't an Edgy Cooper show. This is We're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. The bottom line is this. Kansas City, you got to sign one of these guys to a contract. And potentially, if you can't, you got a franchise to tag one of them. Can we match the monies that you're going to offer them is the bottom line. And do we want to? I think that it would be in our best interest to take a nice, strong look at whichever one of these guys are available. I lean more towards Legereus because he's a little bit younger. But I could live in a world to where if Chris Jones was cool with it, we signed him to a couple year deal. You know, maybe same thing. We talk about it all the time. Three year deal. Thirty. Play to 33. $30 million a year, $90 million, probably uh, 65 guaranteed. Hey, listen, I'm living in a world to where the Detroit Lions signed Trey Flowers to a $90 million deal. So, <laughs> what are, what are, what are, you, you want to go back man, to that era man, of Detroit man, Lions man. football? So, so, what are, so, what are we talking about, man? Like, if I'm talking about if Trey Flowers had the ability to sign a $90 million deal, I do think that uh, Chris Jones is more than worth. 90 million. So um, would I be happy about it? No. Do I think that it absolutely changes the scope of this defense? It changes what we can do in this NFL draft moving forward. And, you know, it, change, it changes a weakness to a strength immediately. I do. Strong let's look not, for let, me. Let's not make the same mistake twice when we're talking about past signings of Trey Flowers, because Maybe we need a quarterback, too. Why don't we just fucking call up Jeff Garcia and see what he's doing these days? Let's, let's just not go down that road. I don't see how they relate. Trey Flowers was dying. <laughs> he came here to die. Chris Jones is going to come no, here. He, he came here to get money impact. and then pretend to play football on Sundays. Yeah, that's it. Like I even had, um, I had an inside track on Trey Flowers, and Trey Flowers was saying, this is a, this is a true, true story. No shade. Trey Flowers said, and I quote, I love playing in Detroit. It kind of sucked in New England where, you know, we just 
played and played and played and played and played because the team was going to the Super Bowl. Your offseason was a blink of an eye, and then you're right back to the grind. It kind of sucks in Detroit. You play the season, and then you got like a bunch of free time. Yeah, this this not, is a real that's thing. Not a way to go about it. I know, so. I know. Here, here's the thing. Here, here's what scares me. Um, let's say we sign Chris Johnson, and he turns out to be Albert Hainsworth of the I'd Tennessee rather sign Titans. Chris Jones, but that's what I meant. Who did I say? Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson. I'm, th- I'm thinking Tennessee I'm Titans. I apologize. Chris Jones. Let's say he turns into Albert Hainsworth. Mm-hmm. Just gets a big contract, goes to the Washington Redskins, and you just. You never hear from him again. Same thing with Trey Flowers. Just gets his big deal. He's got multiple Super Bowls. I'm not saying the guy's unmotivated or that he's lazy, but um, I think you're going to see a production drop off. I don't think you're going to see the same Chris Jones. He's he's still young, 30 years old, but I just have that fear. Just, I, it's just in the back of my head. I don't have the fear because he's not walking into the same culture. He's not walking into a Matt Patricia. Listen, Matt Patricia's kids don't even want to play for him. Like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? And I love to say no shade. I want all the shade on that one. Nobody wanted to play for Matt Patricia. So the the bottom line is this. You're coming into a culture where it won't be culturally acceptable to come in here and not put in a high level of effort. And you're coming into a, a player's organization to where they treat the players the right way. So he'll come in. He'll do his absolute best. I think he'll, if anything, continue to play at a high level or get better. Or get better. And it would just be a huge impact for the Detroit Lions. Either one of these guys, I would be beyond overjoyed if I saw that we signed them. Um, And I think that it instantly makes this defense a lot better. And it would start to get the momentum going even more so of Detroit being a place to go play defense. That's it. Michael Parsons says that that doesn't happen. Yeah, you know how I feel about Michael Parsons. It's on site. At the end of the day, I trust Brad Holmes. I think he's obviously the best GM that the Detroit Lions have ever had. If he goes out and gives a big contract to Chris uh, Chris Jones or Legereus Sneed, I'm okay with it. I trust Brad. But I do think Chris Jones just fits better with that defensive line. It doesn't matter. You've said it before. It doesn't matter who you have back there at corner or safety. If the quarterback's on his ass in two seconds, how much depth do these receivers get and how open are they? I think a good defensive line, good defensive pass rush covers up a lot of issues you could have in your secondary. And I think the Lions have a good secondary. I mean, we got three safeties that we have a problem keep deciding who's going to stay. I know Tracy Walker's gone, but you still got Kirby Joseph. You still got Iffy, um, Brian Branch, uh, Cam Sutton. I know he got a lot of heat at the end of the year, but Cam Sutton played damn well for, what, 14 out of 18 games, something like that. Um, you add a defensive line that gets after the quarterback, Edron Cooper, we've talked about some Braylon Trices of the world, some Latu Latus on how to come in and make this defense scary. doesn't matter who you have back there at safety. So I'm going to take that mindset, save me some money, not pay LeJarius Sneed $20 million. I'll go sign a Kendall Fuller for cheaper, or I'll go draft someone. I don't want to sign a, a cornerback to a big contract for that exact reason, because I can cover up a lot of issues with my defensive line if I make it dominant. I hear you. Uh, I don't think you're wrong at all. I think we're we're both trying to get to the same spot. We're just uh, getting there in a different way. And the bottom line for me is I want our defense to be elite. I've said it before. I want a 20-point defense. I want to tell Jared Goff, score 21 points, and we win football games. That's what I want. I think that you do that by creating dominance at a certain level of the football. I think if we get dom- a dominant corner, and Cam Sutton is a number two corner, we have some of the best nickel options underneath the sun right now, and we got an awesome safeties. I think that means your secondary becomes elite. And now we start talking about the other levels of our, our defense from the linebacker to the defensive line being solid, and that elevates our defense. Now can we go draft a guy that makes it elite? I truly believe if you add an Edron Cooper to a Jack Campbell and an Alex Anceloni, that makes that defense elite. Now, even if we're in those four two five situations where two linebackers aren't going to be on the field, you have your replacement for Alex Anceloni on the team, and you don't have to worry about it moving forward. And when we go into those situations where we have three linebackers or two linebackers and a linebacker playing as a rush in, you have young, hungry dogs out there who can run and spy quarterbacks. 
it excites me, man. I think that it will open up either way it goes. It opens up an opportunity to change this defense moving forward for the 2024 season. You know, we talked about it um, at the beginning of the season about how we wanted to wake up on Sunday mornings, Monday mornings, Saturdays, Thursdays, and we just wanted to feel confident that the Detroit Lions were going to win. I was there this year. I was confident. But after about week, maybe four or five, somewhere in there, I started saying, man, I'm really confident the Detroit Lions can win if the defense plays well. I want to get rid of that question. I want to start saying, man, we got the – we got the Philadelphia Eagles coming to town. Like we're going to take care of business. Like our offense is top five. Our defense is top 10. We're going to get it done. We fix this defense. That's what's going to get us over the hump in this, in this NFC to get us to a Super Bowl. We fell apart defensively and we had some mistakes offensively in that NFC championship game, but we just didn't have anyone on defense that went out there and just stopped the bleeding. Yeah. If I could just solve that question of I'm waking up Sunday, I'm heading up to Detroit, get ready for the game. If I don't have that question of, man, the Detroit Lions are going to win today and I can take away that if the defense plays well. We're there. We're, we're In my opinion, I think we're like two, maybe three pieces away. Two pieces probably. Mm-hmm. Third piece would probably be for depth. Defensive end, corner. Defensive tackle, corner. Something along those lines. And we're going to be right there, I think. Edron Cooper plays linebacker. I know that I'm I'm high on Edron Cooper. I'm not gonna, hey, don't be spilling the sauce. We got a mock my draft bad, coming my bad, up. My bad, my bad. In about a week and a half, and you're just over here just my bad. You know, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. <laughs> jeez, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just never mind. Um, so so guys, we've talked about some Kansas City Chiefs, some players of positions of needs that could really help the Detroit Lions. Kansas City can't pay both of them. Who would you rather have? Leave it in the comments. Hit that like button. If you're a Detroit Lions fan, new to this channel, first time seeing us, hit that subscribe button, guys. Helps us out a lot. We'll be back later with some more content. Peace.